Now, there's new information about evidence that Russia did hack our political system. The Wall Street Journal reporting that U.S. Director of National Intelligence, James Clapper, is suggesting that Moscow was behind the hacking of the Democratic National Committee, and the FBI suspects Russia also hacked into the election systems of Arizona and Illinois this summer. This is more systems are moving to some form of online voting. 26 states in the District of Columbia now, and that's where our next guest did hack into the system in the test. Professor J. Alex Halderman joins us. He's a computer expert at the University of Michigan who spent a decade investigating the safety of our election systems. Professor, good to see you. Online voting, do you trust it if it becomes widespread? Well, no. Unfortunately, online voting raises some of the most challenging problems in cybersecurity because we need to count every vote accurately, but we also need to protect people's privacy. And in a time when you read almost every week in the news uh, about one nation, state, or another hacking into government computer systems, um, online voting is just basically painting a target on our democracy. It's inviting uh, state-level attacks. Well, and you did it yourself, and when you did, you said that you found evidence potentially that China and Iran was hacking into the Washington, D.C. election system. Let me set this up. They, they started online voting in Washington, D.C. They say it's safe. It's for a email for overseas ballots and those folks overseas. And they issued a challenge, a dare, for someone to come and hack it. And you and your students were able to get in in 36 hours. You looked at voter information, how people voted, and let me show the folks what you did to show them that you went in the system. You played the University of Michigan fight song. Here it is. So when you went into the voting booth, you get in the, the, the fight song. How did you do that, and how easy was it? Well, the Washington, D.C. system was a, a website that voters would use, and um, my students and I, who none of us are professional attackers, we're just researchers, um, we found a small vulnerability in just one line of code that was enough to let us take over the system and change all the votes. But that's the problem with online voting, just a small mistake in perhaps uh, tens of thousands of, or hundreds of thousands of lines of software um, could uh, let an attacker in, could give them complete control. And how finally, I mean, how do we make it safer? Is that possible? Well, I think that making online voting safe, unfortunately, is going to require solving some of the hardest problems in computer security, um, stopping state-level attackers from breaking into servers, um, stopping uh, malicious software on users' home computers and mobile phones. Um, all of this is going to require some very fundamental advances. So my take is that it's going to be decades, unfortunately, if ever. Um, before we're going to be able to assure online votes to the same level that we can assure votes on just old-fashioned paper ballots today. Well, you know, someone else finally who agrees with paper ballots is uh, Andrew Appel, the professor at Princeton. We went down there and have a story on foxnews.com right now uh, about how in their test they were, he was able to switch the chip out of a voting machine, as you know so well. Uh, so we'll, that, that's on foxnews.com if you want to take a look at it. Uh, professor Haldeman, we thank you, and thank you for your work. And we certainly hope the system one day can be completely safe.